a bit foreign to a non-believer, um, you did very well by asking um, in a polite way. Oh, you know, or like kind of stating what it was in a polite way without also being like weird about it. You know, you did very well. Um, you had good hospitality. <laughs> food is the key. The food is the key. You know, you, you invite um, people over and you do food before, you do food after. Like people, you know, People like to feel loved and welcome, and so I think that um, that's a big part in that hospitality sense is that, you know, and in our cultures, I believe it's very much ingrained in that, so it's like, that's not a problem, but, um, you know, people, you never know what kind of background people are coming from, what kind of brokenness they're coming from, or just loneliness, or, you know, anything like that, and, you know, we may be teaching a Bible study about this, but you never know how, like, maybe a person might have left that Bible study Maybe not even remembering fully what you just talked about, but they they were more pricked in their hearts about how you conducted yourself and how you, you know. So that's good. Now, this class is on teaching, <laughs> so I will just say, um, as far as notes, um, try to use less notes. And I know that that's kind of hard to do, um, but less notes is always best, you know, Know your material enough to where you don't have to be looking at, at those notes. So when I teach these Bible studies, what I usually do is um, I look over it, I'll study it, and then I'll kind of write myself, like, my own notes of points um, so that I don't have to be looking through. Because then people, the, th the good thing about Bible studies a lot of times is that we learn a lot because we have to study it to teach it to others. Um, it's anything, you know, that you teach. That's how it is. But with this, because people are coming into this thinking, I hope so, that you know more than they do, and trusting you to teach them. So when you do that, you know, you want to present that confidence that you do know what you, what you know. So um, my, one of my teachers last year, she always said, her big quote of the year was, know, know what you know. So like, don't just say you know it, but know it. So I think um, not having not having as many notes and not looking at our notes as much. See, whenever you weren't looking at your notes, your eye contact and everything was, was perfect. So, But you did look at your notes a lot and you read from your notes. So um, it's like that with teaching and, and like preaching. You know, don't try to look at your notes um, that much. Another thing was the chart. Now, I know this is different for you because you usually are on Skype, so the class setting is a bit different. But um, the chart should be something that both you and the students should be seeing. So um, whenever you're teaching a Bible study, if it's in this kind of setting, you can do it like this, reference the chart, because there's there's a reason for it. It has the pretty pictures and it makes things interesting. So, you know, when you're talking about it, um, you know, point things out. You know, point, for example, you were on lesson, I believe it was six. So uh, you're talking about... You, you could have even, you know, here, the per I know how you mentioned the thing about the nativity scene. That was really cool. So, say, like, here, the picture even shows it as this way, but, you know, like, if we got to remember, like, it was this, you know, like, so when you talk about it, make reference to it. Um, I asked a lot where that scripture was more than once. Um, and in some of those, they're on the charts. So sometimes you can reference back, oh, like, it's right here. Or you can have them read from the church, too. So that kind of keeps their focus a bit more. Um, you never know where. I, I like how you um, were very willing and there to help search for the book of the Bible and things like that. Because people, a lot of times, even if they went to church but aren't really, you know, they don't really know. Um, but definitely try to use your chart as much as possible because it kind of keeps things. Um, so in a small setting, you can keep it like this. Um, in a bigger setting, say you're teaching about four or five people, you know, then there's you could always set a small table. And when we do home groups, that's what we do. And we we just we keep it around because it does kind of, especially as the lesson goes on and continues. Sometimes people are like. Especially when they're not used to it, they're like, where is this going, you know, like, <laughs> you know, and so when you are switching the charts, they realize it, it's moving forward, you know, like, it's, it's slowly coming to an end, you know, like that sort of thing, so that's good. A good thing I would have suggested for this 
part, and that's just in this lesson specifically. I know you can't go over all of those, and it's a good thing that you gave it to the person so that they can go home and they can do that. But um, I would suggest doing at least one where you compare it, you know? And so then you say, see how here it says this, and then here this is where we actually see it. Because then that will be like, wow, that is that is cool. And so then they'll open that door of interest to where they'll continue to, okay, I'm going to go home and I'm going to go look at it, you know? Um, so you did very well by addressing, sorry, uh, addressing at the beginning of the class. Um, we'll take questions at the end. That was really good because I could have thrown so many questions out to you during the middle of it, but I'm glad you did that because that stopped me from doing that. So, um, because a lot of people will, a lot of people yeah, do, like, uh, you know, and, and then you're like, that's the next chart, or that's the next lesson, and I like how you even, in random questions, or, you know, deep questions, you just said, we'll answer it, but, and probably in a different lesson, we'll get there. That keeps them intrigued enough to where they're like, okay, I guess I can wait, I guess I can wait for, for next time, you know? Um, one big thing that Sister Kelly's always told us is um, never say, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, um, oh, I don't know, and that, you know, don't, don't just leave it at that, because then they're going to be like, well, you know, then why am I here? <laughs> yeah, you know, and to be quite honest, um, speak coming from a person that wasn't raised in the church, mm -hmm. And uh, that was something that, to me, I was a person that would have reacted like that. Like, oh, then why am I trusting you, you know? Mm -hmm. But the, the good answer is always, even if you don't know, say, you know, I don't, don't, okay, I guess I shouldn't say, don't be afraid to say I don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. Mm -hmm. But don't, don't say I don't know and then that's it. it. Just yeah. say, I, I will research I will, on it. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that time. speaks much louder because you can't also... I rephrase. I phrase that wrong. You can say I don't know, and you should say I don't know, but you don't. You shouldn't just leave it at that. So, what you should do is always. Well, if you don't know, say admit it. You know, and say, well, actually, actually, I've never thought of that, or I've never, you know, looked into that. But I will. And next time we meet, I'll try to have an answer for you. Mm -hmm. And so that keeps them like, okay, you know, again, kind of keeps that door open for them to come back, kind of for them to, you know. Um, because, or if it's something that's for a next lesson, you know, like you, you did it and you did that right, um, oh, we're going to discuss it in a future lesson. Um, but yeah, if you just say, oh, I don't know, who knows, you know, um, and you don't even make an effort, then that's usually kind of a turn off for people to just tune you out. So, but no, you did very well with that. I'm trying to think if I had anything. Um, yeah, answer the relevant questions, leave others for later. Um, and one thing I did notice, though, that I was going to say is that you didn't schedule uh, the next Bible study. Oh, okay. So, um, we've also been told never, never when you're doing a series or anything like that, never leave mm -hmm. without scheduling your next appointment. Yep. Sometimes you can say, oh, well, we work together, I'll just talk to her at work about it. Or I'll just text her about it and ask her. But when you're in that moment and you, that you've already got that interest in them, they're having a good time, you can see. Well, you know, we should do this again, you know, there's, there's another lesson, there's actually six more lessons, you know, that, um, that go with the rest of the New Testament, that will answer so many of the questions you've already asked, you know, uh, when would you like to do, would you like to do one again, like this, but the continuing part, um, when would you like to do that, what days are best for you, and just schedule it. Mm -hmm. Um, at that point, you know, you, it's kind of like locked in, and you kind of, it's a thing, mm -hmm. rather than just, oh, that one Bible study, that was it, so... Um, but no, like I said, you, you did very well. I would just say in the notes, watch how, many, how much you look at your notes, um, make sure to use the chart, um, and, you know, always schedule the next meeting. Those were basically my main, my main things. Um, you did very well on the rest of the presentation. Do you have any questions? I guess, oh, I think you can't really teach the like approach that you do depending on the person. It's yeah. just being like manual, isn't it? Yeah. Not, there isn't a set like candidate for Bible study. Right. It it really always depends yeah. because. Um, I think you have to be sensitive yeah. to that person's situation. Mm -hmm. So the more you know, the better. And then. 
Um, if you don't know much, because sometimes you'll find yourself stuck in one of, or not stuck, I should say, but um, you'll find yourself with a great opportunity to give a Bible study kind of on the whim, right? And you don't really know much of this person, but God's opened that door for you and you, you're there. Um, be sensitive to not, I would say the main thing is be sensitive to, they could be anywhere in life. They could come from any kind of background. So do everything, and this is not cheesy, but do everything with love and with, like, with information. Um, and, you know, don't, I guess, you know, sometimes we, we can fall in error demeaning other, other beliefs or other, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you don't know where they come from, and you don't, especially if they have some sort of Christian background, you don't want to offend the place where they're at. Exactly. Or the place where they've been. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, the, if it's a co-worker you're, or anyone you know, you'll kind of filter out, well, um, you know, I shouldn't maybe say, and there's ways to say it. For example, myself, I grew up Catholic. So whenever I got in the church, um, and people, um, and I started taking Bible studies and stuff, I was that person that had a lot of questions. Um, a lot of questions about the Trinity, a lot of questions about the organized church, a lot of questions about everything that I necessarily um, didn't understand and nor agreed with in, in the um, Catholic organized faith, right? But people were never, um, I guess, I was blessed enough that people were never condescending of, of that. To say, oh, well, they just have it wrong. And mm -hmm. I probably would have, even though I probably would have agreed, I probably would have toned it out because I'm like, you're offending me as well. You know, so I think when we are sensitive to those things and it's in like witnessing and anything like that, um, you know, we can just be sensitive to not offend and to, um, to just speak. Let, let the Word of God speak. Sometimes that's all we have to do. So, for example, that you're stepping into touchy subjects sometimes with things of people have been raised with the Trinity for so long and they just don't, you know, um, doctrinal things like that. Or when you get into holiness lessons, people, you know, it's not personal. But let, let the Word of God speak. So sometimes, you know, we can maybe fall a bit in error of saying, well, um, this is the way uh, I believe or this is the way I think. To say, you know, um, well, the reason this is the, the way we see it is because in this, you know, book, this chapter of the Bible, it says this, you know, and to let them see it for themselves, mm -hmm. um, let them read it for themselves. And if anything, one thing I always tell people is, you know, I, I, I believe it not because someone told me, but because, you know, God revealed that to me, mm -hmm. you know, and I never think anyone should do anything or believe anything that they don't genuinely believe. And so I've always prayed, God, you know, uh, you know, if this is true, if this is your truth, I want to know it. I want to, you know, I want to, I want to live it. And so, um, you know, encourage them to seek it out for themselves so that they don't feel like you're pressuring them in any way. But no, like encourage them, you know, uh, if you have any doubts or anything, just, you know, keep reading the Bible, keep studying. Um, ask God, you know, that to reveal to you what, what you, you know, what he wants you to know. And, you know, don't make it about that person or about you, but just about you guys are both after the same thing and the same mission. Mm -hmm. So I think that those general principles to keep can be molded into different situations depending on, depending on their situation. Mm -hmm. what, what would you normally know like, for example? Would it depend on their situation, like where you would start on the charts, for example? Like what lesson you would start on? Um, I and would definitely start. start I would definitely start at the beginning. There are only certain specific times that I would start anywhere else, and mainly because it does build that foundation. Right. Um, and you know, and for a person that's newer, um, usually the Old Testament's kind of like you know, and they're just like, why don't we just learn about Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know, and so people will like skip to that. But there's a lot of things that if you know the background, yeah. they, it, it it's helps. It's really interesting the way that they lay it out mm -hmm. on these lessons. Like mm -hmm. They don't appear boring or anything like that. No, it's actually yeah. really interesting. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, a lot of it is that you can always pick out a personal application. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes it good because a lot of times people steer away from Old Testament or steer away from certain books because they don't know how to teach it. 
but the way these these charts and these lessons point you know lay it out is very very teachable. Mm -hmm. um, you can start at the beginning, and even when you're talking about you know creation, you can pull out how God did something, mm -hmm. you know, and make it personal, you know, and so. I think that as long as you always keep that personal application, you'll keep their interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh yeah, 